Well, I kind of screwed up. I got ahead of myself. Something which I, I'm usually pretty good about not letting this sort of thing happen. This is the tire off the back hole. You know, the front wheel. I had mentioned that it went flat. Well, what happened... You know, it worked fine when I was using it. And it sat for like a week. And I went to move it and the tire was flat. So I said, well, okay, you know, it's an old tire. <laughs> I figured well, maybe I got something in it. So I tried to air it up, but I couldn't get, you know, I've got one of these uh, clip-on type air chucks. And I couldn't get air to go into it. You know, it would, it would go on there, but it wasn't actually flowing air. So I thought, oh, well, I'll just tear it apart, figuring there'd be something wrong with the tube. Uh, a lot of times on this old stuff, you know, you get this rust flakes on there, and they can sometimes cut in. And, like, okay, here, this has been patched once before, and I'm always a little leery about these chemical-type patches. You know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, I used to have, I'm not sure what the brand name was, but they used to be real common. They were these uh, self-vulcanizing patches. There was a, a kind of an anvil that clipped down the wall, and then you had a couple different sizes of spiders that went over the top of it. And the patches were actually on this square metal thing that was filled with some kind of combustible something or another. I, I, I'm sure it's probably an illegal substance now. But you would clamp that thing in that anvil with these spiders holding the corners of the patch, and then you would light it on fire with a match, and then you would burn, and that would heat it up and vulcanize it onto the tube. Really like them, but like I say, I don't think you could even buy them anymore. I, I had quite a few of them, but I think I used them all up. But they were reliable. They really went on there. These sometimes, they can be a problem. So I kind of expected to have a patch loose on this. So I fought the tire off, which isn't that horrible of a job if you've done it a few hundred times. Um, actually, these size tires aren't as bad as like those wheelbarrow size tires. Because in order to get a tire to come off, you've got to be able to drop one side of it down into the groove. And when you've got those little bitty tires, they're, they're actually, there's not as much of a groove. There's not as much room to work with. So it isn't that bad to get them off. But, <laughs> like I said, I got ahead of myself. Got this thing off. Then I'm running air in the tube trying to figure out where the leak was. Could not find a leak for nothing. You know, I find stuff like, like this, which always makes me leery. A lot of these newer type of tubes, uh, a lot of times you'll find little flaws in, like, the mold. You know, like the mold was too cold. when they, I, This is not uncommon at all nowadays. You know, it used to be uh, the tubes were that, like, red rubber kind of stuff, and I never had a problem with those. But... Uh, of late, I, you know, most of the tubes that you get now come out of like Taiwan or China, and they really don't seem to be rubber, they seem to be some kind of plastic. And like I say, the mold is evidently cold because sometimes you get these weird, like where the rubber's kind of dribbled and not, you know. So it's hard to get good tubes. But I expected to find a problem with the tube, could not find a leak anywhere in it which was aggravating me. Well, I finally come to find out that it was a valve stem core that was leaking. Now, this is something a guy should always check right away, first thing, you know, before you go tearing one apart, is to check that, that core. You know, just put a little spit down there and see if he bubbles. Well, like I say, I couldn't get air to flow into it. Well, probably because that stem core was damaged in the first place. And that's why it was leaking. But 
what I should have done, I should have actually asked my brother when this first went flat, I should have asked him, because I can bet you, when he, he had it in the pole barn at home, and I bet when he pulled it out of the shed, he had to air the tire up, because this thing just didn't suddenly start leaking. I think it's been leaking all the time. The problem is, like on a backhoe, all your weight is in the back, so there's a lot of counterbalance. So if you've got five pounds of air in the front tires, unless you're using the front end loader, you really don't notice that they're low. You know, they, it doesn't take much, there's hardly any weight in the front of a backhoe, it's all in the back. So, that is the problem. But like I say, there I got ahead of myself. It was an old tube, I mean, you can see it's even got the paint on it. So, And the tire, like I say, is ratty because people tend to do that on backhoes. You don't need a good tire on the front unless you're using a loader a lot. And this is, yeah, it's an old truck tire, you know, that somebody just stuck on there because on this kind of equipment, you put on whatever you got. It's actually, the tire is wider than it should be for this rim, which made it a little bit difficult to get on and off, but that's where, you know, that thing I made the handle for, that bead breaker, these are uh, nice to have. And a couple good tire irons. But that's thing I should mention. These things, since they're not used that much anymore, have gotten to be outrageously expensive. New ones are like 25 or 30 dollars for you know a stupid piece of iron, but you can't go using crowbars and stuff. You really do need these spoon type tire irons. But if you run across any of them at like a garage sale or a rummage sale, you know that sort of thing, or in a thrift store, uh, be smart and buy them because that stuff has gotten to be very expensive only because nobody uses them. You know, they bring them in, have them done on a machine, but if you ever want to do your own tires, you got to have them. Well, the same with these things. If you ever find one of these bead breakers, buy it. Uh, they're expensive too, and they're awful handy. You know, for any tire you're working on. But, before you do anything, check that damn core out. You know, I should have I should have switched cores and then tried putting air in it. You know, it's not a big deal. I've got cores laying around. In fact, I'm one of the people who uh, actually carries that little tool in my pocket all the time. Well, just a reminder. It'll be a reminder to me. Check that core.